Welcome to the party. It's your watch time, friend. If you're seeing me, if you're listening, then it's time to watch something. What's up guys, it's your girl D, and this is Watch Time Friends, where you watch stuff with me, your friend D, because my other friends don't like me enough to do it. Today we are watching Bridgerton Season 3, Episode 7, <laughs> and last time, uh, basically Colin announced his engagement to Penn, to his family and uh Penn's family found out about it in Lady Whistledown in the Lady Whistledown issue and her mom wasn't so happy about it but Colin stood up for her which is I guess no one's ever done that before they did the the things and um and Penn still hasn't told Colin about her being Lady Whistledown and in fact the queen has now put money on her head <laughs> Now there is now a reward to whoever can tell the queen who Lady Whistledown is. So now everyone is looking for her. And Cressida was about to get forced to marry an old man who hates life. It was going to make her life miserable once he married her. And so she's decided she's going to, she told everyone that she's Lady Whistledown, hope, hoping that it would ruin her chances of getting married to this old man and basically she wouldn't have to do anything that she didn't want to do anymore um yep that's pretty much where we're at <laughs> so i'm not gonna hold you guys up let's watch something it has not been delivered no one has it perhaps the queen has finally discovered her Caressa Camper, that blonde backbiter do we really believe it is her it makes perfect sense. Does it? The poor child has clearly been badly brought up. I think she is a genius. I cannot wait for her next issue. I will not insult the devil by drawing parallels between him and Cressida Cowper. You have a visitor. You, you gotta be a little bit more discreet, Pen. <laughs> Pen. Colin. You well. I've been worried. She's sick with guilt. Perhaps you should not be here in case it is catching. <laughs> she asked the chaperone. I know there is something you wish to tell me, but I'm happy to be patient until you are ready to unfold whatever it is you are feeling. Can we <laughs> speak about it now? Because of Cressida Cowper and her insane claims to be whistled out. Do you think it is really her? Clearly I always not. imagined Lady Whistledown might be more clever before I go. Oh, she's clever, all right. <laughs> the jeweler has just finished setting it. <laughs> Her mother is so oh. funny. Oh, Colin, it is beautiful. Oh. Oh. Is all this ink? Uh, oh, yes. Um, letters to uh, to share <laughs> our happy news. Of course. Girl, you got to tell him. Because if he figures it out before you tell him, he's going to feel even more betrayed. And you're going to have this cloud looming over you. You can't even really enjoy your gosh dang engagement. Well, the tree's not in a storm anymore, so maybe that's a good sign. I promised Lord Greer a debutante bride, not a gossip writer. He has rescinded his offer of marriage. Oh, thank goodness. Truly. If you think you can keep working under my roof and tarnishing my good name. You are sorely mistaken. Do you have a good name? I am sending you to live with your Aunt Jo. Where's that? Do that. Aunt Joanne lives in Wales. Precisely. You can write gossip about the sheep. Well, that backfire was quick, wasn't it? You must take back your statement. We can say the Lady Bridgertons gave you too much wine and you were overcome. You do not believe me? Cressida, this I is know, not the time to be daughter. prideful. We Lady need a plan. Is an astute writer. You have many gifts, but cleverness is not amongst them. Jeez. Jeez. Miss Cressida Cowper, you are summoned to the palace at the behest of Her Majesty the Queen. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. You did not think this through. You did not think this through. You only thought about the positives and not the negatives. 
we are selling the club. Oh, that is good news. I'm always is pleased it? when people take my advice. And it is the right decision, Mr. Mondrich. You must draw attention to yourselves. And in the best way possible, by throwing a ball. Hmm? Well, um... That's how stressful is it. <sighs> Not just a party, a ball. You do have a way with entertaining. Ha! Forgive my intrusion, I simply forgot my, uh, hat. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just passing by? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I suppose I could have sent a footman to fetch this, could I not? <laughs> but then I would not have been able to see you again. But to thank you for such an enjoyable evening. Well, it was... <laughs> Quite a night, was it not? My sister was the first born. But you were the first boy. But we are adults now. I'm sure they've never talked about all the stuff. How terrible her marriage was. So, sure. Yeah, it seems like that she still harbors that resentment against, you know, he's the one who forced her to marry that man. And uh, she just kind of had to endure it until... Well, you know, <laughs> his demise. There is no time like the present. Your family is clearly occupied. Break your multitask. You must divide them. Like, they're always like this. You must interrupt. <laughs> it's a gasp. Watch. Excuse me. I have been taken ill of the plague, and you are all doomed by association. Three banana macarons for one chocolate. What's the chance? That was funny, though. <laughs> I think you have to like walk up to them, you know. Family. Oh. See, they stopped talking when she said something. Thank you. John has a small announcement to make on our behalf. Very small indeed. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. What is it? Um. We are to marry. <laughs> 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 oh, congratulations. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I wish we could have seen the, like, you know, the proposal and stuff. But I've not gone. Guess I get it. They're private people. Did you know she was Lady Wissoda? You sp what? spoke no, with Penelope I this morning. Yes. I didn't know Pen was Lady Wissoda. She is devastated about Miss Cowper coming forward. Tell me you did not know. No. Dang it, you should have said you, you did know. Mister. And then, you know, when you when the news of ev you know, eventually comes out that it's actually Penn and you still knew, it won't it won't hurt that bad. <laughs> you have been so angry with Whistledown. What will you do? There is a part of me that should like to march the house with a pitchfork. In truth, everything that has happened of late has softened me, I suppose. You mean everything with Penelope? My only concern now is with her well-being and our future together. You will speak with Miss Carper. With the scribe herself. Oh, great. Now she has to keep up a new lie. <laughs> Pen. Ain't no way. <laughs> I was going to tell him. There's no way that this is how you were doing it before, because this is not discreet at all. For whatever reason, my brother truly believes he loves you. Why tell him? When the better thing is for you to put down your pen. Mm. I cannot stop. Yes, you can. Especially now. Yes, you can, because now you have the perfect escape. You don't mean. Oh, as harebrained as her display at last night was, Cressida has done you a favor. She'll never be able to write a convincing issue. Let the column die with her name and no one will ever be the wiser. Eloise, I have worked too hard for too long. Of all people, I refuse to let Cressida Cowper take credit. It would break my heart. And what of Colin's heart? It would break his to find out the but truth. Lady Whistledown is my name, she likes not writing. hers. Your name is about to be Bridgerton. Well, dang. You cannot be both. There's a lot of that going around, isn't there? Everybody wants everybody else to give up what they like to fit in to society. But it's just gossip. Let it go. I don't think it's just gossip, though. She was able to actually have her voice heard when no one else was listening to her. Lady Whistledown was her voice box. 
I can imagine her believing that giving that up is like silencing herself. She'll go back to being unseen and unheard. Oh boy. I feel like the queen will be able to tell it's not her. So, this is the young lady claiming to be Lady Whistledown. And why have you come forward now? I should like to claim my reward, Your Majesty. A measly 5,000 pounds should be nothing to the great Lady Whistledown. I claim it so no one else can take what is rightfully mine. Well, I will give you your reward yeah. as soon as you give me your latest issue. With the bounty on my head, my publisher has grown wary. But I should have an issue forthcoming mm -hmm. very soon. Know thine enemy, Miss Cowper. I know Lady Whistledown as well as I know myself. Her greatest strength is that she is an observer. What have you observed in your life other than yourself? Just last night, I observed Miss Francesca and Lord Kilmartin. Together all night at Bridgeton House. But I'm sure there is still time to sway Miss Francesca towards the Marquis. <laughs> Miss Cowper, no. the real Lady Whistledown would never make such an easy offer of assistance. Without a worthy opponent, I no longer care what mediocre match Miss Francesca chooses to make. Mediocre? Unless you can print a convincing issue, I do not wish to see you in my court again. I don't even know if she knows how to get it printed, to be fair. See, you didn't Greta, think this through. I forbid you from attempting to publish. If you publish and cement your reputation as Whistledown, no one will marry you. She doesn't want to get married. No one will marry me now. Also true. <laughs> or at least if she wants to get married, like she wants to get married to someone that she actually likes. <laughs> we should talk about announcing your betrothal uh, as far as the queen In is concerned. In fact, we have discussed this. I realize I was not the queen's first choice for your daughter. Well, only because she gave so much attention to Francesca. I simply think it might be wise mm -hmm. to uh, wait until near the end of the season before announcing your intentions and that way we can all slink off to our country homes for the wedding and the queen can pick a fresh diamond at the start of next season. It is only that mm -hmm. hmm. we do not wish to wait that long. We should like to start setting up a home together. Oh dang. We think speaking to the queen may be the wisest decision. Okay. Well, if you think you are up to it. That seems like a lot. We would like you to speak to the queen. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what? Yo, but why? Why are they like rushing it? It's not like Daphne and, and Simon when it was like basically an emergency. Well, they had to get married right away. Otherwise, uh, old Dudhead was gonna ruin their reputation or her reputation. I do not see why Penelope should get such treatment. Uh, weddings are surely not as important as pregnancies. Where is Penelope? Riding conspicuously, I suppose. <laughs> now you're just reading oh, Whistle Down. Is this the old, old issues of Whistle Down? Oh, I'm still not feeling well. Reminiscing, I guess. At least she you wasn't blatantly riding again. The of a man of great name and means. You have the rest of your life to lie around and do nothing. But for now, until you walk down the aisle and settle into this marriage, your duty is to make Mr. Bridgerton feel as if he is the most important person in the world, to cater entirely to your husband, his dreams. Whoa. What about my dreams? Ladies do not have dreams. Please. They have husbands. And if you are lucky and you fulfill your role, sometimes what you wish for may come true through him. Dang. And to be fair, that's what she knows. Yeah, they don't have the luxury of seeing their parents be a love match and their mom believing that they could find a love match. That's just not their story. But it is possible. But it's like, you can't be mad at Lady Featherington for not giving advice about a life she doesn't know about. <laughs> and then there are these two. <laughs> I feel like Benedict is eventually going to be like, so what are we? <laughs> it feels like that's where this is going. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank 
you. <laughs> to Mr. Modrich's fine club. To the club. To, club. Mm. Mm. to the club. Oh. Um, oh, wow. Another. No. Must, no. must. You must finish it. You have to. You must finish it. Hey. You're the family. And they're just like, yeah, of course you have to give up the club. And it doesn't even like, it doesn't even compute to them the idea that they he would want to keep it. Mm. Today, I publish the bans of marriage between Mr. Colin Bridgerton and Miss. I don't think Penelope we've ever seen Federer. this before. This is the first time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, oh. ye are to declare it. This is interesting. That Bridgerton and Miss Featherington shall be married here in three weeks' time. This is interesting. It's like a separate thing. The objections and the wedding. Matrimony ye are to declare. <laughs> well. This side eye and Miss Kenworthy is ridiculous. Shall be married. They really need to talk. Like, seriously. If you still have me. Dang it, Penn, you I have three weeks to tell the truth. Hmm? I don't think she can really give it I know up. there was something you have been meaning to tell me. But I have loved you. It's the moment we met. An embarrassingly long time, really. I will spend a lifetime begging your forgiveness for not seeing you sooner. There is no need. There is nothing in the world that makes me happier than being with you. Whatever you're thinking, no. <laughs> Colin, what are you doing? <laughs> well, dancing. Okay. My future wife <laughs> in the church and we'll be married. <laughs> May I present Lady Keswick? Have you two met before? You have to talk to your sister. Otherwise, she's just going to keep doing this. <laughs> you do so enjoy words, reading at least, and perhaps you might like to help me write the column. Cressida, do you not remember what was written about me last year? What you wrote in Whistledown? Oh. Of course. All right. Forgive me, I do not know why I wrote it, really. But together we can right the wrong with high praise of your character in our very first issue. I do not wish to be your collaborator and I cannot be your friend any longer. I am sorry. Is this truly about Whistledown? I would speak a little bit lower if I were it's you. It's no wonder Penelope abandoned you. Oh, excuse me. You are clearly just envious that I've made something of myself. That's crazy. Perhaps I am envious of Whistledown. It is quite a feat. And after spending a season feeling nearly invisible, I almost understand why one might be driven to write it. You look kind of crazy because she knows it's not you. But she just reverted back to her old ways after being, you know, sad, I'm sure. Such a charming couple, do they not? Mm. Yeah, her one sister, whatever her name is, needs to relax because they've been getting all the attention from their mom their entire lives. And Penn has been a butt of the jokes. And now that she's finally not the butt of the jokes, now she's upset. Like, can you relax? I, I have grown to respect that much. I'm simply worried if the queen presses too much, then she may see that you still have some doubts. Oh, my doubts do not matter if Francesca is happy. But what they are do if the queen suspects them. She may feel emboldened to oppose their match. Uh, oh, <laughs> my come here. Oh, my dear. <laughs> the portico seals the vista from the square. Which... Interesting. I wonder what she's thinking. I'm sure she wants to kind of celebrate her engagement, too. And old dude just seems happy to kind of, like, just completely fly under the radar. He might be too in his shell for her, actually. I mean, I hope it kind of works out, but, like, I don't know. Are you, Are you stressed enjoying yet? yourself? Mm. I am enjoying the idea of giving the best ball Mayfair has ever seen. I'm leaning towards the silver. Very nice pairing with our cake plates. Or do you think they're too much? Never. I just planned the greatest wedding Mayfair has ever seen. Mm. That is music to my ears. Finally having some good, wholesome, sweet moments with her mom. Oh. Ah, oh, Miss Penelope. 
It has been too long. It was not until your delivery boy dropped off your last column that I learnt you are engaged. <laughs> yes. oh. I'm very happy. Oh, forgive me, did these last few weeks Did she just drop well her done. accent? I'm happy for you. And when you sneak out to write your column, I oh my gosh, she did, tell Mr. Bridgerton. That is what I have come to tell you. I didn't know she did I'm that. I'm letting Miss Cowper take credit for the column. The issue you read about my engagement will be my last. Penelope, that column's your life's work. I cannot continue writing. You know my favorite part about dressmaking? Mm-hmm. Is seeing the glow on a woman's face when she puts the dress on. I can't imagine ever giving that feeling up. She knows what it she knows what it means what it means to have a passion. From my club. Why? Because of your daughter. Why else do you think? I'm pulling her dowry. Honestly, they probably were looking for any reason to get rid of that man. He's probably terrible to be around. There is no desk in my room. I'm writing a whistle down. Good. Oh, you're on board oh, now. Your father was just ousted from his club. Mm. So now because you need the money. He is withdrawing your dowry. We must get that reward before the real whistle down decides to publish again. Read me what you have written. Oh, boy. Dear reader, it is I. Dearest gentle Lady reader. Lady down. Today I bring you much gossip from about the many lands. Near and far. Far and wide. You gotta go. Is that all? You gotta go study the... Study the source material. Dearest gentle reader. Oh, dear. I think that's right. <laughs> I'm frightened. Hmm. Do you fill your time with any creative pursuits? Do you write or draw or well, paint? He used to do some of those things. No. I, uh, <laughs> I <laughs> dance sometimes <laughs> at parties. Well, yeah. Paul is a patron of the arts. He spends all of his time supporting the theatre. I see. This is how Tilly and I met. I shall never forget the first day I saw her. After a performance of Much Ado About Nothing. Did she tell you to be very, very afraid of her? <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. And so you should be, both of you. <laughs> Who is this guy? Mr. Bridgerton is dry. Oh, Benedict. Benedict. Okay. So. I really hope this party goes well. The Mondrich Ball. I also wonder if there is actually any music playing right now. <laughs> like, the cello player, the court set or whatever in the back. Like, are they actually playing anything? <laughs> are they only pretending? Ah, Marcus. She's just going to keep. <laughs> A few more friends I should like you to Oh, meet. my word. Now she knows you're wrong. <laughs> she knows she's wrong for this. I have never liked that color, but it is winning on you. Thank you, Mama. You did the job. Oh, my sweet. No. I am pregnant. Everyone knows a baby can push water up into one's eyes. Mm hmm. She just can't just stand not being the center of attention. It's so crazy. Like, let your little sister have some shine for once. Is the queen there? Oh, there Her she Majesty is. Her Majesty the Queen. She's here. Well. As I assumed, lackluster at best. Jeez. Oh. What is this? Hello? Whoa. Not bad. Not bad at all. Very cool. Mama, hmm. shall you try to speak to the Queen now? Perhaps we should let her settle in a little more. <laughs> I wonder what her doubts are about their marriage. Perhaps we should try to approach the Queen now in case she departs early. Well, she just got here. <laughs> I... We should wait, Francesca. Wait? <laughs> Mama, I... I do not wish to wait. I know, but I do not wish to ruin things for you. Do you not think how much would cheer her? I mean, it wasn't her first pick. You still do not believe in this much, do you? I have supported you. Yeah. 
You have been perfunctory in your support. Lord Kilmartin is delightful. Mm -hmm. But I just... Not every attachment must be dramatic and hard fought. What John and I have is easy and I love him, Mama. I thought that was the one match that was gonna be like not complicated in any way. <laughs> I will go after her. Uh, Lady Danbury, why are you being like this? Speak to whomever you like, but it is not for you to go after my friend. You are not the only one who cares for Lady Bridget. Must you take everything from me? Enough. Whatever I have done to deserve this ire, tell me, so that we might be done with it. What I care about is that I had a chance of happiness and you took it from me. The night before I was to be married, I very nearly escaped to freedom. Do you think I do not know that it was you who betrayed me to our father? I heard him thank you. Well, dang. Your charm may work on every widow in the town, but I am unmoved now. If you will excuse me, I must find my friend. Well, I cannot imagine what anyone would judge you for. Then Tilly has not told you all of our stories. We don't even know who you are, Paul. So, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> you and Lady Arnold have quite a rapport. I'm surprised you two have never, in fact, do not answer that. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> the wine has made me rather rude. The wine has also made you rather charming. Did she set him up for a throuple? I should go and talk to <laughs> Is that what this was? Forgive us. We were just... Talking about you, in fact. <laughs> Would you perhaps like to join us? I, uh... Ah, I've forgotten. I'm supposed to be somewhere. No, forgive me. Oh! I know the song. The song is good in any way you rearrange it. <laughs> in my opinion. Hello, ladies. <laughs> they just gonna walk in and own it. Wow, this is one of the more amusing parties I have been to. Honestly, I love it for her. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> I'm not mad about this, to be honest. She's like, the red. Well, what do we do? Wait for the queen to summon us, mm -hmm. and we hold our heads high. Exactly. Shall we take our girls and go? Well, no. I do wish to see what exactly. happens. Exactly. <laughs> Y'all are too nosy. <laughs> Y'all are too nosy for that. <laughs> the queen has summoned Miss Copper. Oh, does she doesn't have anything that she uh, wrote. That I do not wish to see you in my court or out of it. I simply wanted to give you a gift. Oh, really? Her mom helped her with her homework. I knew it. I'm sure it's not going to be exactly the same. She has returned! Look at them! They love her. They hate her and they love her. Wait, what is it? Dearest gentle reader, I am back and shall return soon enough with a full issue. You may now know my name, but have no doubt, I know you even better. Yours truly, Lady Whistledown, or forever now, Cresta Cowper. Mm. Well, Miss Cowper, I am intrigued. Surprised, but still intrigued. Maybe this is all my fault. I convinced you to let her take Wissadan's name, and now she has somehow written something coherent. Mm. Not to mention puppets. Breathe. We have created a monster. 
a monster who seems to have a feud with me, and by extension, my family. I put them all in danger again, just like last year. That was my fault. No, I was reckless. Because I'm going to publish again. With one issue, I can discredit Cressida. Hmm. It's not just gossip. Whistle down is power. Pen, I you remember my first issue, what I wrote. Oh boy. We're talking quite loud, aren't we? Three misses, foisted upon the marriage market like sorrowful sours by their tasteless, tactless mama. The alliteration was a little overdone, I admit, but the column began because I felt powerless in my own home. I was forced to debut a year early and I had no say in anything. Writing was the only way I felt I could have a voice. Let me use it now to do some good. You must get a full issue out right away before Cressida does. I trust it will take her a minute, her and her mom. But make sure it's good, though. She's back! Oh boy, it's about to be Anonymous Lady Whistledown against non anonymous Lady Whistledown. Apologies for the late order. There's been some confusion with the silk delivery. You'll be paid handsomely for your worst service. Anything for Lady Whistledown? Yes, sir! What's it say? Is she about to be like, Cressida is a fraud? <laughs> she could never be me. Uh oh. Colin. You. Oh. A lady whistled out. Surprise! Dang. Well, I was hoping she would be able to tell him herself. Uh, but that did not happen. And so here we are. It is before they're married, but dang. I'm not gonna lie. I thought that he was gonna follow Eloise and Penn into the room where they were, where she was confessing all of this stuff. I thought he was gonna be listening in, but I guess they wanted to keep that heartfelt moment heartfelt and so they delayed the the reveal right when we we literally right when we forgot we were supposed to be worried about him finding out <laughs> yeah that's what he finds out of course it is first of all i already knew this but now i know it even more so cressida has bitten off more than she can chew her and her mom <laughs> managed to put together like an announcement of a coming out. That's what they managed to put together. Not even a full issue. Because one of the biggest things about Lady Whistledown is how she observed everybody, which means she had to be in the midst of them. But first of all, Cressida was hiding. And also, I think that the queen and some other people were right. Most of the time, she might be on the wall the same way Penn was on the wall, but I think she was kind of not observing other people the same way that Penn was. Like, she knew about Francesca and John, but like, I don't know, it just wasn't the same. Like, it's, it just wasn't the same. Penn is the ultimate observer, and she is clever. Not necessarily just mean but clever like there's a difference and it's not just like there's like some thought behind just her talking about alliteration like does Cressida even know what alliteration is hmm? and she didn't even study the source material about the even the the beginning of the writing when she just the address to the people that wasn't even right when she first did it. Which to be fair, I'm sure she was just nervous, but like, girl, I know y'all got an old, old issue of Lady Whistledown laying around somewhere. Yeah, you, you have to. So I'm not sure how Cressida and her mom were planning to get the issue out. I mean, we see that it was, this was delivered, their little card was delivered in a way that Whistledown has never done it before. So I think that it would be a little bit suspicious in some ways that all of a sudden when Cressida comes out as Lady Whistledown, now the way that she delivers her words look different. I thought it was going to be like a watermark 
discrepancy or something about it was going to be different or they were going to change something up probably in unintentionally and then that would be like a that's never been there before type of thing but yeah i don't know i i, I just think that they there's no way that i just don't think the crescent and her mom could keep up the charade i mean and now that colin knows who knows what he might do? He might be so mad he just blurts it out to everybody. Who knows? Or maybe he'll just call off the engagement and leave it at that. I don't really know how far he's willing to go or like what are the levels of betrayal that he would be feeling from this? I'm really not sure. <sighs> then you have poor Francesca and uh, John. I really do one wonder what are all of the the hesitations that lady bridgerton has i understand like i could see her maybe not wanting to like right now as lady danbury said the queen's attentions are on this lady whistledown thing and colin bridgerton and Penn and like other stuff but if they push francesca and john in front of her then she's gonna set her eyes on them and the fact that he was not the one that she wanted Francesca to marry. And so she might be like, oh yeah, I forgot about you guys. And then try and force the marriage that she wanted initially so that she could be right. Um, which is, I'm assuming, I guess that's where Lady Br why Lady Bridgerton is like wanting to hold off because the longer we can keep them out of her line of, out of the queen's line of fire, the more likely it'll be that their marriage will go through with like out any hiccups, I guess, or without any interference. But I guess I could see how that is like kind of stinks for Francesca because every other marriage that her siblings were, you know, whenever her siblings were engaged or any other things like that, it was just met with absolute excitement and, and now, she basically has to hide her engagement so it's like dang i could i could see i don't i don't blame lady bridgerton for i don't think she's like it's not like she doesn't like john it's just that maybe she would have maybe that wouldn't have been her first pick for francesca but she's supporting it as long as her daughter is happy and so it's just like she's just trying to make sure that the, it actually goes through and that let's not bring attention to this right now because if we do that the queen might remember and then try and move move some pieces around to be the way that she wants it and then you'll end up not being happy so yeah and i'm sure the the way the bridgertons are it's like you know as long as you keep my family happy we will accept you and so i th I, I think that they would embrace john eventually i mean they they kind of already are you saw he, we saw he was having drinks with the um, with colin and benedict and um and mondrich so they're already embracing him so but i mean i guess that was the guys they're kind of clueless to be fair <laughs> They're kind of clueless. Like, even when Anthony and Benedict were, like, looking at each other, like, it's so crazy that Colin's engaged. Da, 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 da. Like, of course you guys didn't realize what was going on. You're all, you're both always so swept up in everything you have going on that you do. I don't think they even ever, like, notice anything that's going on around them with any other the people that are not directly within their, like, little bubble as far as, like... Of course, Anthony was gone, but like, even when he was around and like when he was going around with Daphne, he didn't want to hear what she had to say about wanting to get married and what was going on. And that, uh, old dud face was like a, not a good guy. Like he didn't even see it because of what everything he had going on. And of course, Benedict is there, but didn't realize anything that was going on around him because he's so wrapped up in uh i can't remember her name the widow lady and like all that stuff so of course he's not gonna notice anything <laughs> you're not gonna notice that your brother is falling in love or anything like that because you're all swept up in your own thing so that's what i mean by the guys are clueless they're just 
they're in their own worlds. I don't know. And it is interesting. I like how Cressida and her mom tried to play it. Kind of walk into the party with your, with your, your, your heads held high and just like owning everybody. You just owning the reputation, owning all the, the negativity per se, and just kind of being like, yeah, uh, it's me. I'm her. I am her. And yeah, it, it kind of dwindled a little bit when she was talking to the queen, but. I'm just interested to see if they do try and come out with an with a with a column. What is it gonna be like? Is anyone gonna notice the difference? We'll see. We'll see who gets their their column out first, and we'll see who they believe is the real Lady Whistledown. Let's see who are the true fans that are gonna notice the difference in the writing. And I wonder if other Lady Whistledowns will come forward. Like, no, I'm the real Lady Whistledown. <laughs> like, Penn's gonna be like, it's not Cressida. She could never. And then uh, another Lady Whistledown is like, neither of them is her. I'm her. You know, like, I just wonder. That would be interesting. But yeah, this, it's been, it's, it's going, it's going. <laughs> So I'm excited to see what else we get for this whole, for the rest of the season. We only have two episodes left. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching with me. I appreciate you. Thank you. If you like it, you can leave a like. And if you want to see more from me, consider subscribing. And if you're interested in seeing these reactions full and uncut and in all their glory, you can check out my Patreon. The link will be in the description. And you just need a copy of the show or movie uh, on your own. And you you know, we could, you sync up to me reacting. And it'll be like we're watching together. And then we can kiki as we do. <laughs> but yeah, that is going to be a wrap on this one. So I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace. Welcome to the party. It's your watch time, friend.